Oh, great. I'm sorry, you guys. And we lost people. And Patricia's coming back. I don't know. Did you guys all get kicked out of the Zoom? No. Okay. So we'll get back to where we were. Um, we are at... Um, still in the same notes, September 16, verse 11. Baptism is what changes, uh, is an outward symbol of what's happening in our heart of repentance, right? And so it wasn't something, it was just a repentance of sins, okay? And so John the Baptist, as you were about to hear, um, was when I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hands and he will clear. So he's coming to sift. He's coming to separate those who are in, those who are out, those who follow the Lord and repent and those who don't. And so... Um, with that, right, we go to the next thing. So he's talking about this. I don't know if this is exactly the order, like if it happened the next minute or what's going on. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan. This is where John the Baptist was baptizing, the baptizer, right? Came to the Galilee, to the Jordan River to, baptize, to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. And you come to me. Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this, to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, a lightning on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I love, with whom I am well pleased. Okay, so in this story, we have John the Baptist, he's baptizing, right? And then Jesus comes, and John says, someone better than me, someone greater than me, who I cannot even untie his sandals, okay, is coming, and he's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Okay, what does that refer to? Well, that's actually referring to something that's going to happen later at Pentecost, but also what happens in us. For a long time, only three types of people were given the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. And those three people were prophets, okay, those that God spoke to and they could interpret dreams and have dreams and visions and those kinds of things. Kings, King David, right? King Solomon, other kings had the Holy Spirit. Prophets, priests, and kings. And the other one is priests, the people who worked in the temple. And so the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit coming upon you, that's a sign that you are now in a different covenant, okay? That's coming. And so Jesus comes to John the Baptist and he says to him, I need to be baptized. But John's like, oh, no, you don't. I need to be baptized by you because he sees that this is the guy who's greater than me. I can't even tie his shoes. I can't even carry his sandals. Right. I'm not worthy of that in who I am as a sinner. And this is John the Baptist. Right. And so but Jesus tells him. This needs to be done to fulfill all righteousness. What does that mean, Chris? What do you think it meant when Jesus, because this is red letters, like this is Jesus's words to him saying, I need to do this to fulfill all righteousness. What is he getting at? Um, I'm not too sure, actually. What is uh, Matthew to... all about as he's writing? Fulfilling prophecies. He's always about evidence, right? Fulfilling this, he had to be the righteous one. 
okay? The righteous one would come and set God's people free. This is a fulfillment of a prophecy. Again, he's, he's stacking up the evidence again and again and again. And then, not just with a prophecy evidence, right? But then, more evidence of someone being sent by God is something supernatural, right? What is this? What's the supernatural event that happens when Jesus is baptized in the water and out of the water? What's going on? What happened? He said it right there. I see God coming coming down like a dove, like the spirit of down. Right. And he starts talking about Jesus. Yeah. And you guys, this wasn't oh, like the two guys hanging out in the river by themselves. There were crowds of people. Sometimes thousands of people would come and be baptized. Okay. That's what's going on. So this isn't just something that John would be, or that Matthew would be like, oh, and this happened when they were the two of them in a, in a little cove on the river and no one else saw. This is this is public knowledge. This is like you watching a news conference, right? Or something like that right now. Like they heard the voice of God. The heavens opened up. A dove ascended. Glory shone from heaven on the sky. He says, this is my son. A declaration. Remember at the beginning, one of the things you have to have faith in is that Jesus is the son of God. And so we have multiple, multiple, multiple witnesses to Jesus being baptized. And when he's baptized, there's a voice from heaven. I've never had a voice from heaven telling me that I'm the son of Joel Sutzma, right? It doesn't happen for people who aren't God, but it happens here. And so he's stacking up the evidence of, look, this is what happened. There's people who can testify, right? There's all these things. Obviously, John the Baptist couldn't testify because he had his head chopped off later but right the voice the declaration he is my son and so providing these people with evidence for believing that this guy can be the messiah because after this he's going to start his ministry right he kick starts his ministry right this is what gets him going and before he goes and starts healing the sick and preaching and and going to the temple and all those things he goes into the wilderness for 40 days, okay? 40 days in the wilderness. We're going to talk about this next time, okay? But for right now, um, we are going to do chapter four next chance we get. What I need from you guys, okay, is obviously you need these notes in there. And I'm sorry the other recording got lost, but it was mostly just for review. Right. So make sure you for sure have this in your notes. Um, make sure if you're Andika, Aria, and Jovan, your notes have not been submitted into ManageBack. Andika, if you don't submit your notes, you get a zero. It's way easier for me to see that you didn't submit and give you a zero than it is for me to go through it and make sure you got a seven. So get that to me. Your grade needs it. It's very simple. Come to class, take notes, and submit them. The rest of this class, okay, is for you guys who have not finished your reading. Finish your readings of chapter 10, 11, and 12. Write the summaries and those things. Get those ready for your next note submission. Um, and if you're finished that or if you need to get caught up, we need to start working on our SA forms. So by next week, we're going to try to have the first section of our form for services action finished. So that by the time we're after youth camp, okay, probably right before the October break, you can do your services action over the October break if you need to. And you can get it done over that time so you don't have extra stuff to do next semester. So keep that in mind. Do your readings. Work on your service action forms for the rest of this class. And I'm going to mark Andika and Nayera I'm going to put you in the attendance saying you came to class. Um, if you have questions, 
please ask. If you don't have questions or this video obviously is going to be 